Hello everybody, welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Resident Evil, the Netflix series. So yes, I guess you can come to a conclusion what I was doing in October. As I discussed when I did my podcast on my previous, uh, or should be released, the previous one is uh, Raccoon City. Um, Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City. Now, when I did that, it's trying to be the video games, but it just didn't come together well, and it kind of below average. This TV series from Netflix caught me in the very beginning. Now, this is a weird mix, this TV show. One season, and it's canceled. You have a show that came in, I think, like, right behind Stranger Things, then dethroned it. That means it became the most watched, ever, whatever, streamed, and whatever. And they still canceled it. Now, my overall view of this, uh, my impression is, they shit the bed, you fucked up a easy transition of an adaption and it just boggles my mind. You have obviously the money. You obviously have the talent. Believe it or not, this is not shitty performances. All right, maybe there's a weak one here and there, but I, I, I like them. I don't know what to say. Um, Ella Balinska, she's awesome in it. She plays Jade, one of the sisters. You don't get to see older Billy, but even her younger version, Tamara, Valerie Smart. They've got um, Sienna Nicole, Arduang. But what, who carries this whole thing is Lance Reddick. I've been fast. This is a guy. He, 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 you put him in anything, and he, he's just awesome to watch. And you really get to see his acting chops in this because he gets to play different aspects of himself, and spoilers, spoilers, um, there have been cloning in the Resident Evil history, and he's involved, and obviously, we get to some of that, but I'm, I'm in the beginning of this show, and I'm kind of intrigued, and uh, I think maybe at first a good way to say is I was enchanted with it, Again, this is October. I'm looking for things to watch. Resident Evil. I've talked about this in the other podcast. Welcome to Raccoon City. I'm a fan from the beginning, from 1995 or 6, when the games came out. Tolerate and enjoy and somewhat love the Mila Jovovich uh, Resident Evil movies. Although they're such a departure and some of them are really bad. It's a guilty pleasure type thing. Plus, I think Mila Jovovich is just... Probably one of the greatest female action stars of this age, but that's just, you know, bias and all this shit. But this, this show has so much going for it. Like I said, Ella Balinska, um, who's the, um, um, Paola Nunez Rives, who plays, uh, Evelyn Marcus. Awesome. Fucking awesome. And Lance Reddick, let's just say his name again. Fringe. The Wire, in the John Wick movies, he plays like the uh, some hotel manager or something. In any case, this is not money, because I think Welcome to Raccoon City was a bit, little bit of money too. None of the, you know, halfway decent CGI threw me off, where I was like rolling my eyes or anything. No, this is fucking story and editing, and. God awful music throughout the whole thing. But what boggles my mind is who was this made for? Uh, you know, uh, let's put. I'm gonna get in two sh two shoes now. I'm gonna get, I'm an exec at a Netflix, and holy shit, this guy has a pretty decent idea for a Resident Evil. Let's go. Here's your budget. Bang! You got your actors, your actresses. It starts off well, it comes out strong, and then becomes the most watched thing. And within eight episodes, you're canceling this. 
what did you think was going to happen? And on the other hand, you're the writer or whatever, and the showrunner, let's call it. Uh, who the fuck would be a showrunner? I don't know, but Andrew Deb. Now, you're coming from a guy who, if I'm correct, this is a showrunners of Supernatural, which ran 15 seasons. Granted, I love the show. It's a little rocking in the beginning, but once you get into it, it's fucking awesome. I haven't finished all 15 seasons. However, this is a big departure from that, in my opinion. I don't know. Now, on the other hand, I'm the guy. I pitch this idea, or they come to me, maybe, and say, look, you're the supernatural guy. You're awesome. We love you. Let's do this. So, he's got an idea he's pitching. It's approved. And... Where do you go from here? Did you write this script knowing you were not only going to split the storytelling into flashbacks, so you're telling two different years, basically, right? So, you're doing the past 2022 and 2036, and you're jumping back and forth, and this works in the beginning. The first episode, maybe the first two, the first... Three, it cascades and becomes wildly uncontrollable and annoying. Really fucking annoying. So, you're enchanted, you're, you're interested. Holy shit, I'm watching Resident Evil. It's a, it's a TV show. Can this be... And I'm not even a big fan of Game of Thrones, but can it be that quality? You know, it's a Netflix show. It could be great, it could be shitty. And... Again, this is not money. This is not fucking budget. You can tell. This is not actresses and actresses. Actors that are charming and pull you in. It's, you know, it's everything else. It's the decision to make this split between two timelines. You've got great young actresses, great young, you know, story you know, you can, where you can go, and you have the adults, the contradictions, where are they, what's going on, all those plot and storytelling ideas that you can filter through this type of thing, but it doesn't work here. And I can't even think the closest thing might have been like Arrow, and after five seasons, people were fucking flipping out, like, enough with the flashback shit, especially when it doesn't mean nothing, and it's filler. But no, you don't just get that here. You get stupid writing, dumb ideas, dumb premises, and situations that make you grind your teeth. I don't know if many people know this, but I'm an atheist, and I give no fucks about most religions and all that stuff. But I found myself going, praying to Jesus Christ, and going, oh my fucking God, in my head, over and over. It builds up such a fucking frustration. That I can exactly see when these, whatever you call them, dailies come in and the executives go, hold on, look at us, we were up here. You know? We had the throne. We came out strong, we toppled everything, and we went down, and from what I could see, you're still playing this fucking game. You're still riding this out. To the end. Live or die. Let's split this fucking storyline. And give stupid fucking actions. Stupid decisions. Stupid music. And it just fucking deteriorates. Anything you've gained. Any love and respect you've had for the show. Is gone. You know by episode 4. Again no. Great performances. These actresses and actors should be applauded. Maybe one or two, but ancillary, not so important characters. You know, and it's just one of those things. This is a creative thing, and how it doesn't get a second season is beyond me, even as shitty as it is, and it just gives you that impression of this day and age we're in. I bring up Buffy the Vampire Slayer a lot, but it had like a 12 or 13 episode first season. Who the fuck knew if it was going to ever take off and it was based on a 
a fucking movie that kind of bombed in Josh Whedon's. I like it, but what are we doing here? Who are we telling the story to? And you had a great opportunity to do a really good teenage angst pre-apocalypse uh, story and carry it through to your to the to the president or whatever the fuck you're calling it of 2036. Now, the ga- the games want to be canon for this show, right? So, in 2022, it's all a cover-up, right? Resident Evil, the first game, uh, Raccoon City, uh, Tijuana, these incidents that happen in the game are, let's call it canon. They happen. All right, so, the Wesker you know in the, um, even the Miliovich movies, let's say, or whatever, and the games... Um, it's always been Lance Reddick in a sense, or a clone of his, and you got so bogged down in your minutia bullshit, I didn't give a fuck anymore, and I got angrier and madder as it went on. You know, there's so many scenes where this Ella Belinska is just captivating. I mean, she's like, you know, not dolled up, she's, you know, just in the dirt, blood, guts, when they do certain things, there's talent there. And there's actual, you know, good props and some decent CGI that they kind of filtered in there. So this isn't one of those things. This is a failure to course correct. I mean, is there not a person or executive at... at, See episode five or something that says, "Hold on, we our ratings, our viewership dropped like crazy. Let's right the ship." And is it that there's a conflict, and they go, "No, this is what we did. We did it, and we're done." And they go, "Okay, well, we, we can't renew this. Like, come on, look at the opportunities for these people, acting jobs, whatever the fuck you call that industry, and you know, and all the pro, you know, camera people." How do you not course correct this? It could have been course corrected very easily. What you needed was a two part flashback episodes and then take them out and put a chunk in like one one episode. I remember the first season of Heroes. Well, this, it might be the best superhero television show ever for the first season. They took one character who became popular and did a flashback episode, one episode. And it is one of the most cherished, beloved episodes ever. And it's done right. So fucking good. But then you look at it when it came back after like season five and tried to, you know, and they didn't bring back most of the characters. And it kind of had this feeling like bad production, not a lot of money. So, in, in, in Heroes, Season 2, was I give it a break. It had a strike, less episodes, they had to cut it down. But I enjoyed it. Seasons 3 and 4, blah. You could see the course of this show. This show could have been course corrected and been a fucking hit. That's how much I like so many actors and characters. But you put them in the stupidest shit situations, you fucking destroyed their character and their integrity in the fucking show. Once you do that, where do you go from there? You want to have the main focus, the protagonist, so so to speak, of your show, who's Ella Malinska and plays Jade Wesker. You don't get to see the older sister who the flashbacks focus on until later, but every situation is a, oh my god, bombardment of bullshit, and then everybody dies around her. And then again, everybody dies around her. And again, everybody dies around her. Then she gets back to the place she calls home with her fucking child and her fucking boyfriend, whatever the fuck we're going to call him, because they make clear he's not the father of the child. And I, they make her, they put her in a situation where you're no longer, 
the action star. You're no longer the protagonist. You don't pull the bullshit she pulls and then try to carry the last episodes into this fucking mess. Because no one gave a fuck. I bet you even the executives were like, fuck this, you ended it, it's done. Her story is over. She cannot be our focus. We can't carry on with this character. She gets back to her fucking home, spoilers, okay? And is so keen on using this new fucking gland from a fucking uh, a zombie that can control others. I call them zombies, but whatever. That she does experiments on it. And that's not enough because she's neglecting her daughter, right? Like, that could be good. That's gold right there. She's gone for so long. She comes back to daughters like this to that. Ballet, she's grown so much. All that shit. Not enough. She's got to find a breakthrough. Bypass all the fucking people that lived at a university, they call it. Go get a zombie. Bring it back on the ship. I mean, okay. You bring the zombie back on the ship. Fine. Do your experiments. And then they start fucking with... How do you have your daughter there, your friends there, your pregnant friend who gets killed by the fucking zombie? And you want to carry on, push the button. This whole fucking thing is about bullshit. And it fucking frustrates you when you see the missed opportunities here. And I'm supposed to be fucking giving a fuck now? When did you determine this was the plot? Did you tell the executives? Did you want this fucking idiot? You're portraying as a smart, fucking strong person. And by the way, there's a halfway clever thing, or it's kind of eye rolling, but it pays off almost because, like in the first episodes, she gets caught because Umbrella's looking for her. She runs away and leaps off this fucking platform. And you know, obviously, she's dead, right? Because you don't live from this, and there's zombies everywhere where she's going to land. But as they come back to the show, I don't know if it was like the ender, and then it came back to the next show. She lands and hits the roof of a van or something, a car, and she should be dead. Organs, busted, broken bone, like everything. She'd be in traction for like nine months. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? Now, in the flashbacks, you find out that her sister, Billy... And her were fucked with in the embryo by Wesker, their father, quote unquote. So, he says he made them stronger. So, the one girl doesn't get the virus, or she gets bit, but she doesn't turn, but it influences her. That's the uh, sister, Billy, and Jade is... Just becomes this fucking vehicle for garbage storytelling shitty cohesive plot subplots that are just fucking mind numbing and so yeah when she jumps off she hits and you go oh shit she should have died ruptured organs and everything she'd be dead on the spot okay they've made her stronger so we can even suspend our disbelief and say she's like Mila Jovovich's Alice in the movies both of them good you know what now you could have them do a couple of things that seem, you know, superhuman maybe. Because in Wesker in the fucking game in the show, he does guys just like slow-mo. He could, you know, fucking move super fast and whatever. And let's not get into, what it was Chris, like punching a boulder. But anyway, these games are meant to be fun, outrageously crazy. But when you're playing the games, if I'm going through and then I am in a position where... I get my home base fucking killed, and then I get my best friend who's pregnant dead in this whole fucking bullshit of this ship, and and, and then fucking big crocodile, so I don't give a fuck that you you gave your hand up and they said, we gotta push the button, and I thought it was like, oh, something that uh, they showed, but they're gonna come back and, you know, pay it off, and they do. However... When you tell me you gotta push the button and you're on this fucking ship, this, you know, oil tanker or whatever the fuck it is, and it's got military nuclear code keys, fine, right? Right? And and I'm fucking getting, like I said, I keep saying Jesus Christ, I'm, you know, praying to fucking gods to 
end this fucking nightmare or please have it corrected somehow. No, two guys pull the chains off their necks, classic, got the keys, put them in. They both got to do it at the same time. They look at each other as they keep building this fucking moment up. So they can turn the keys and a pop thing pops up and there's a red button. And let's hit the fucking button. You know what? Let Jade hit the button. Excellent. And they release a crocodile that's 50 feet big and is gigantic and, it, you know, it was fucking stupid. Everything here is hard cuts and then once in a while they'll get a 2036 thing on the fucking bottom of the screen. But you're going from the first fucking episode to the last, back and forth, back and forth, hard cut, soft cut. Just fucking, who gives a fuck what moment you're in? Just ride this fucking thing and cut it right to the next thing. It's fucking annoying. It's frustrating. And what makes it more frustrating is, I, like I said, I love some of the actresses and the actors in here. Let's give them credit here. You know, we've got, the money is obviously there. There's some great stuff in there. Filtered through this nonsense. And it's just... I don't know. I don't know what the fuck these guys are thinking. Because I, I find it hard to believe in this day and age. Again, I'm going to put, my, put myself in the showrunner's uh, shoes, right? I have made 15 seasons and I am touted as a savior of... Whatever genre TV, action, super, whatever. Do I not take advice? Is my vision so set? Am I so confident in the story I want to tell? That I get to the end no matter how I fucking do it and just don't give a fuck. Like, it's, it's done. It's over. Holy shit. Frustrating. Annoying. Fucking cuts back and forth. And granted, you've got great young actresses and whatever. They're fucking awesome. you got the stupidest storytelling. The plots are fucking drivel bullshit. When you could have cut that up, made it an impactful two-hour premiere with the flashbacks, then did your six episodes, and then you know what you could have done? You could have went back, maybe seven and eight, and tied it up into uh, the reveal story. Holy shit. Fucking Lance Reddick dressing up as Blade. To, 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 to put him in the same position as the, you know, Wesker from the games and let's say the movies. Because, you know, Lance Reddick is African American, he's black, and the original one is white. All he does is look like Blade. And it's distractingly awesome and fucking horrible at the same time. This fucking, uh, you know, Paola Nunez is fucking awesome. Uh, you know, and if you really get into it, like, Marcus was another character from the games and the movies. And he was, like, the creator. And you can get her trying to keep her family together with, I inherited this and I want to bring Umbrella back, right? Because Umbrella fucking killed thousands of people, right? And there's this fucking shitty fucking character who's filtered through this thing who's the, you know the whistleblower guy and he's fucking terrible holy shit is it terrible and you find out raccoon city was nuked oh my god like yeah so the games are real everything's happening it's a cover-up and this uh evelyn marcus is wants to reinvigorate rebrand uh umbrella and it's all about joy this fucking you know New drug. Well, guess what? Not only will you solve shit like anxiety, depression, suicide, possibly, let's say, aging and cancer and things like that. No, you can mind control people. What is that you say? Yeah, yeah. And I'm not talking about like influencing their decisions like, hey, I got a CEO of Umbrella, and I can control her, right? So, yeah, I'm going to propose this proposal for my division, or I want a division, and I get it. And I need more money. To, 
I want you to overlook some of the safety features, and I get, I get it, right? No, 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 no. This mind control lets you program them to do dance routines and sing and shut on and off when you want them to. Or from a data pad. Or an iPad. What the fuck they're calling it. Holy shit. Just, you know, I don't know what the fuck to say a lot of the times. Like, I just want to get on here and just fucking smoke my weed and do my thing. And just share how I feel and some observations about these things. Fuck doing like three hour deep dives on certain things and analyzing all eight of these episodes. I don't want to fucking bother with this bullshit I had to go through to watch this. And again, I'm fucking saying in my head, Jesus fucking Christ. Like, oh my fucking God. So many times. I was sick of it. Sick of myself. Sick of my own fucking brain. Although it's weird that some people don't have, like, communications. Like, they don't speak. Anyway, it's a brain thing. What am I going to say? Again, how do I go to my... Uh, yeah... But I say say real names, and then, I don't know, I feel like I'm doxing people, but I'm not recommending this. I have been recommending a show called Sense8 to one of my friends. And this show made me cry. It got me in the feels. It's fucking amazing. It had two seasons. They canceled it. The fans loved it so much, they came back and ended it with like a Netflix two-hour movie. Or something like that. Now, I will go to bat for that. And I will keep trying to see if she finishes this fucking show. Because I believe and hold a value in it. And it's like epic in my opinion. You know. And. How do I. You know, what do I, I got to put them in a straight jacket. Fucking pin their eyes open with like toothpicks or something. And force them to sit through this fucking eight episodes. Is it eight episodes? Like, I'm going to tell you right now. Because I am so fucking frustrated at some points in the show that by episode 4, I thought I was in episode 7. These flashback cuts, hard cuts, bullshit, is just... It just fucking draws you out. It leaves you wondering at times. I'm not fucking kidding you. Ready? I didn't know what I was watching. I forgot what I was watching. How is that possible? It's Resident Evil. Since 1996, it became a staple. It's a franchise that is known for fucking throughout the whole world. And if your analytics and bullshit tells you it's from a new generation, it was, it was me when I was younger. Well, in 1996, I'm 25, right? I'm born in 71. So are you reimagining this for the 25-year-olds of this day and age? Well, I'll tell you what. My friend Demi just had a birthday, and she's right there, 25-ish, right? I'm not fucking guaranteed she ain't sitting through this shit. I don't care if she's, and she plays the fucking video games. She's the perfect person to watch this shit. I'm not kidding you. We were just talking about her playing the fucking game in a VR. And you know what? You can take Walking Dead, right? Where it's a struggle to get through the first four seasons of that fucking show. And they have some of the best fucking actors and some great storylines but they redo shit too much and at and season six when they have that highlight fight at the mid-season and um uh, the fucking son oh fuck i forgot their names but carl and carl gets his eye shot out that's when the show was done it fucking ended for me i tried another you know i tried to get through to season 10 and fucking garbage fest. But looking back, every friend I had who was with me watching that show just gave up. And I'm talking season two. Where, you know, you could fucking say, arguably, it's a great season. But the things that start frustrating people, it just, they build on it and just double down. Right? I don't want to see a stupid fucking scenario once again where no one hears zombies coming and they turn around and there's fucking hundreds of them stop the bullshit and i'm talking about walking dead but it's these frustrating things that you put into the foundation to your show and this bypassed it and actually i was intrigued so the first episode's flashback type scenario 
is okay. Because if it's setting up what it needs to set up, and then episode two, bam, it hits you, let it go. No. This whole fucking idea storyline was written like this for the whole thing, and no one fucking corrected it. I don't, I don't get it. Don't you have a ton of money invested in this shit? Did you have such faith in the showrunner, the king of Supernatural or whatever? Again, I love that fucking show. But when I had to hard sell it to my friend, I had to tell him the first season's hard to get through. But once you start getting into the nostalgia, and you go, well, nostalgia's like fucking 10 seasons in. Once you start getting into the heart of the show and what it does well, it's fucking awesome fun ride. Ride it till the wheels come off. I give them credit. I applaud you for your fucking supernatural. Whatever you tried to do here was fucked up. It just doesn't work, and it frustrates people. I could just see people just being in love with the aesthetics of this show and going, what the fuck are they doing? You really have to do this school thing and bitten and, you know, and draw it out for fucking eight episodes? And not do it well, not have, you know, like, uh, reoccurring triggers for these flashbacks that let you know and prepare, and it's going to be short, right? So, 2036, she looks at a doll, and blah, 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 and then you see, you know, the doll triggers that, oh, what happened in 22 with this doll? Like, whatever, I'm just making shit up, right? But, no, they don't get to it and get away. They linger there in bullshit storytelling and bad writing. And when you have bad writing and you're, that connective tissue is bad... It's not just bad writing, it's bad momentum, it's bad flow. Again, why am I in episode 4 thinking I'm in episode 7 and forgetting what I'm watching? Like, it's so disconnected from Resident Evil in that sense. So, I don't know, did you try to come up and get the 25-year-olds of this day and age and just thought they'd like this teenage angst shit? done badly and they're gonna let it go and be captivated by some awesome actresses and actors i mean sometimes that happens right like i said maybe that's the case with buffy and you know shows that um just you know were struggling at first and came through you could have done that with this this is not you had some great pieces here some fascinating stuff and you just squandered it and fucking abused it. Because I think that's why you're fucking, you're not getting renewed. I play a video game that I'm fucking getting annoyed with called Star Trek Fleet Command. I've done podcasts on it, by the way. It's gotten so bad. It's gotten so fucking frustrating. And it's just, it's becoming a tiresome thing. And, you know... I am I gonna do another podcast on that? Like trying to course correct these game developers, and you know what happens is they're making millions of dollars for, let's say, Paramount, right? They 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 use the Star Trek franchise name, and people love the game, which I did in the beginning, right? So hey, look, Paramount or whoever the fuck owns Star Trek is like, hey, this thing's bigger than millions, right? Now it's getting one star reviews. It's getting shit. People are fucking angry. It's a money hungry garbage game that they're not fixing now there's a point where paramount says look the money i'm making is not worth you ruining the name of star trek so we have a great new series called strange new worlds well when we've got people complaining to us that you're abusing the star trek name and ripping people off with your hundred dollar packs and putting everything behind paywalls and making people stay in the game longer and just glitches and bugs that make the game unplayable. No, we have to pull out. I don't care if you're making me $50 million. Whatever. So in that case, what is going on with Resident Evil? I don't think they, they this was worth it for them. And again, yeah, I'm a fucking 50-something-year-old in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, you know, uh, this uh, Ella Balinska is gorgeous. Drop dead gorgeous, but they make her up to look like a you know, dirty refugee most of the time, and it works. I'm fucking, I'm, I'm, 
I don't know why. I don't know her from things, but I bought her in this, and I was captivated, right? And the young things, like, these actresses and actors, they didn't get shitty people. Again, Lance Reddick, I'll watch him in fucking anything, and he elevates it. And some of the parts he's in are fucking great. You know, the fucking, he has to go to school for a school uh, thing because the daughter got abused, and then fucking hit, I don't know. And then there's like, holy shit, what am I fucking watching, and why am I watching it? This doesn't have to be here. You didn't have to take seven, eight episodes to run this flashback story. And it's sad because they're good fucking, even the young actresses now, I, I enjoyed their performances, like what they were, you could see the talents there and squandered it. Just a missed opportunity here, and you just shit on the name of Resident Evil, in my opinion. Because all the things I'm talking about and just trying to convey here are turned on its end when you find out Jade is a fucking idiot. A fucking idiot. And you portray her as this... I mean, don't buy for a second. You know, she's out there doing... And she goes into a lab and does experiments. Fuck. No way. I bought more that she's trying to do good stuff. And she comes from this Wesker thing that things were, you know, um, revealed to her. And she knows the story. So she's going to go out and try to get these uh, specimens for her real people who do the work. Oh, and then you fucking have her become a fucking basic idiot who gets people killed in the second... This is like the last episode, too, the, the next to the last episode, maybe? You meet up with a daughter, and you have some moments there, you, you could have worked this. No. Let's have Jay bring a fucking zombie on, and it's okay, it's okay, everything's safe, your daughter, hey, daughter, stay right here. And I wanted to fucking strangle the writers... And everybody who approved this fucking nonsense as the fucking thing gets loose. Eh, knock me down, go chasing the daughter. Ah, bullshit, run right into the friend who's pregnant. And now we got drama, the shit. So she caused it. It's just fucking stupid. And then the sister's looking for her to betray her. And let's do fucking shitty action scene with drones and... Horrible music throughout this whole fucking thing. Holy shit. So, you know, my recommendation is don't watch this. I mean, you might think you're going to like it in the beginning. I did. I, I, I got to admit, I was really interested in, was liking the place I was in. By episode three and four, I wanted to pull my fucking hair out and I was looking for a deity to fucking worship. And that goes maybe to my love of the fucking franchise. I don't know. But I know I don't like shitty storytelling and subplot cohesive flow that just fucking shits on everything. And not just lore. Just what are you trying to do? You're trying to, you know, re... You know, I don't know. But it doesn't work for me. So Resident Evil, I don't know what the fuck to call it. It's Resident Evil, the Netflix series. It's a mixed opportunity, dumb bed, and someone let the writing and editors and someone get away with way too fucking much. Or did it look good on paper and you bought it and you took a shot? You know what? Good for you then. Good for you. But whoever fucking made this, all the writers and the decision makers, you had a great fucking cast. You had decent fucking money. And you just fucking shit on it either... Ego, whatever, and I get it, right? I'm right. If I'm writing my book, I don't want people fucking telling me how to write my book, but it's so personal. It's so a story that comes from my head, and I can almost relate to that. Like, hey, I'm going to write this TV show. Here's my, here's my eight seasons. And people look at it and go, oh, oh this is going to be great. And it just doesn't work. But somewhere in there, you have to course correct. You have to be, you know, you have to be, you have to introspective enough to notice these things. And course correcting, take advice. This is probably just one of those things where enough people come together who, yes, and believe in a project and just go through with it. So, do you get credit for that? Maybe. I do not recommend watching Resident Evil Netflix. Even if you love these, let's say you're a fan of this actress or actors, like I am for, let's say, Lance. 
Holy shit, what a struggle. You're a Resident Evil fan. What the fuck? I have to be reminded I'm watching Resident Evil? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. I created this fucking thumbnail from images I found. And I found myself going, this fucking thumbnail I made is way too good for the show. <laughs> and, and by the way, I shit on everything I do. I'm not an artist. I don't draw or anything. And yes, maybe I'll get paid from time to time to do thumbnails and stuff, but it, it's, it's just working with assets, right? So I find a picture of the yellow thing with the red, and then I split it and make it, I separate them more. I find this other image of the fucking creature, the liquor, with the, and I put that in, and I put the Netflix look. And as I'm finishing it up, getting ready to do the thumbnail, and I do my border, I go, holy shit. This is better than the show in, in a certain respect, and I don't know. I mean, it goes my ego or whatever, and I sometimes tell myself as a fucking writer, but I'm such a damaged human being. Uh, I, like to qu I have to question myself, because I never know where I'm being honest with myself or not, and that's what this whole podcast thing for me is in that sense, and I don't like it. And I really was disappointed and frustrated and, I don't know, kudos to actresses. Again, I've said their names. Uh, you know, if I wanted to go in and start fucking with everybody, you know, I'd say, okay, um, let's go through the writers, right? So, who directed the first episode? Brown Hughes, written by Andrew Dabb. Second episode, Brown Hughes, Mary Lay Sutton, Rob. So, uh, so they do change things up. So, okay, so hold on. They're changing directors and writers here and there. And then they go back, okay. And they change again. You know, I don't know. You've got enough diversity here in writers and directors for each episode that someone's got to come on and say, what the fuck? Uh, you know, I don't know. So there you go. Resident Evil, the Netflix series, a wasted opportunity, a frustrating ride if you're even a big fan and you love this shit and if you love this actress and the actors you're gonna be fucking angry and frustrated and if you do like it fucking kudos but it's destroyed it's cancelled it ain't coming back and I guarantee you there's no fan feedback to get this thing going so I don't know I could see a reimagining again you know the, the welcome to Raccoon City this could blend in some fucking way you know, you got enough money, just do it, whatever, but, there you go, everybody, I don't know, this is my fucking Halloween, Thank, thankfully, I've gotten the, my classics, like, Christine, and the original Halloween, the thing, you know, just Exorcist, and, ugh, these things, just a little, little speed bumps, but, I gotta admit to being so frustrated, and seeing the quality, some of the great actresses, and stuff, actors, and, what a fucking mixed, bag of shit and anyway hope everybody's doing well i'll talk to you all next time ladies